Hey guys, how's it going? Hey guys, how's it going? Good to see you. It has been crazy here having my kid home for the last two days. I can't get nothing accomplished. So I apologize if I've not gotten to you and all your messages. I'm working on it. It's just, whew, he is something for sure. Got some big blue clouds out there today around the house we just had a little bit of a, um, a sandstorm come up so it was really dark there for a minute and now it's turning really really blue and pretty so sorry about the glare but look there's a little smiley face inside the clouds <laughs> no rain but a little bit of a sandstorm came blue and through, and now it's all pretty. How's everybody doing? So good to see y'all. I got some practice questions and a couple of cases for you guys to do tonight. Anybody got new questions? Hey, Plain Jane, good to see you. Hey, Annie, how are you doing? Chaos, good to see you. Lynn, good to see you. Lord, having my kids home from school. Oh, man. We were having to do school lessons today and stuff. Science questions like buoyancy and density and uh, what floats on water, what sinks, what doesn't, what's volume. Oh, my Lord. I can't remember the question I got wrong. Oh, stuff that conducts electricity like plastic versus steel versus all kinds of stuff. Man, we are all good here, doing good. Hey, Debbie, good to see you. Hey, Randy, Randy. <laughs> it's good to see you if you are in here I don't know it's asking me to go um, live together that would be fun to do a collaborative with Randy Ray Randy because he does um, medical coding theme TikToks too yes Annie you have a quick question does synvectomy include a chondroplasty. Plasty is a repair. Synvexty is a removal of a nerve. It depends on the CPT code. Do you happen to have one that you might want to look at? Which we're in, let's see, the uh, muscular skeletal, we're over here. We've got some synvectomies right here that I know about. And you got to look at your mama code. So mama for those are going to be over here, the 71. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see if I can find anything in my notes. Um, eight, nine, eight, seventy-seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. That's the debridement, and I can't see that. Yeah, those are two child codes. I get. I think. I think you gotta order them separately. We have a CPT question, a practice question where we do a meniscus repair and then we add the synvectomy up here. So 
And those are two child codes. We normally don't add those together, but um, in this particular area we do. So I'm assuming if we had a meniscus repair or if we had the chondro and the 76 together, we would build them two separately. I think we would build those two separately. This doesn't go in with the synfis just because it's under it. They're all individual different procedures. What they do include is the arthroscope because that's mama or not the diagnostic one, but the surgery one. Um, and all it includes is the arthroscope surgical because we've got that semicolon. Semicolon stops anything that she has to do with any of the additional codes and mama is individual on her own with this infection lavage and drainage that's just washing out so that's the difference with that mama but she sends and gives part of her dna to her children and the only part that each one of those includes is the arthroscopic knee surgery which includes a lateral release in this one and those kind of things. So if we have both and we do both procedures and they're under the same header, we would technically need a modifier to let them know that we did the condo and the synvectomy we meant to probably, but for AAPC questions, you know, they, they most of the time don't even include those modifiers, but I hope that helps Annie. That's as far as I know. Now, I'm no permanent real coder day to day and play with these codes. And again, it'll be all different based off health insurance plans and um, your contracts with your medical groups. Medicare will pay one way versus Blue Cross Blue Shield will pay another way. And since I know you've already passed your CPC, I'm just wondering if that's what you're asking as a real life situation or was it practice code? Ugh paid for practice exams, working on them now and listening to you, trying to use your elimination techniques. Keep it up, Kenza. It's something that will not happen overnight. The first time, second time, third time. No, you're going to have to keep keep at it. Oops, oops, sorry. I'm not going to overstuff. Keep at it, but it will come to you. I promise. Hey, go-kart. How's it going? Go kart, you gotta remind me. Um, Travis being home from school totally threw me off. I know you wanted tutoring this week. Um, I can do it after this live or Sunday or I got somebody Monday. I don't remember who, but I don't know when your exam is. Is it Saturday? I had full intentions on doing something, and then Travis being home has just thrown me off. I haven't been able to do anything. Yeah, it's 87. Look how cool I was, Annie, running straight to the codes when you just said one word, the synvectomy. That's awesome. I normally can't do that. <laughs> but I did happen to go to that straight first CPT code without you giving it, so that's cool. But I was working with those codes with somebody I was tutoring Wednesday night, Wednesday afternoon. Yeah, and she wanted to know about musculoskeletal. And I go to these synvectomies and these menectomies because they're super tricky with that and and or when that's the only thing that's different between those two CPT codes. These are always a a tough coding area for the CPC exam. And they always ask about those knee repairs. On a side note, I know Sandy, I saw that. On a side note, Hollywood Horror Nights premieres tonight at Universal Studios. I was just streaming some TikTokers that are there and they were getting on their very first rides. So that's awesome. I would love to take, Travis has an obsession with that Us movie. It's very scary. I think it's too scary. My scary movie is, you know, Norman Bates is terrifying or Jaws. 
but he liked the Us movie. I thought it was painful to watch. But um, now Universal has changed the Norman Bates scary part where Norman comes out of the hotel when you're riding around in those little tram cars by the house and stuff. He comes out and chases you with a knife on the tram. Well, now they've changed it to the Us characters, and he just is dying to go back there and see those. But I'm waiting till Nintendo World opens up before I go back in Cali. And him getting sent home from school isn't making me want to go take him to Horror Nights of anything. He can have his own Horror Nights here doing baseboard cleaning. Because I got a ton of baseboards he can just keep on cleaning. All right, well, it's practice code error. Yep, I coded it medial and from moral condyle with the 75 and 77, and the rationale only lists the 75. Is there a CPT code? Yeah, they don't have, they don't have, they haven't done an insider view on that particular code where I've been collecting all the insider view books. <sighs> They, don't, they haven't done that one yet on the insider view, so I can't go look up the full CPT code descriptor. Y'all, want to know something I found today? <clears throat> I was trying to do a TikTok all day about telling y'all about a side hustle that I do to pay for my yearly exams and stuff. Um, or not yearly exams, but my yearly books because we got 30, we got less. We got 28 days until the new C CPT book comes out, which has me nervous as a tick anyway because I got to get started on those books and making all those notes all over again. So I was trying to make a TikTok today and um, I went to the AMA website just to have a picture of what they. Uh, their release date and the name of the book. Um, and I found something today. Let me go there and I'm going to show y'all. So I just went to AMA, regular website. Ugh. So all I did was a search of AMA. Let me get my thing. Come on. You can focus, I swear. That's all I did in Google. I never picked the first one because it's an ad, so I scooch you down and then pick on this one. <clears throat> when I get here, I wanted to just go to the store, I think, is what I did. Or did I go to CPT? I can't remember which one I did. But I noticed we had some early release stuff here, so I was like, ooh, they got 2023 stuff. And then I noticed right here they had vaccine codes. Category 3 codes, and I don't know. So I went to here because, you know, I like vaccines. I did peds vaccines all the time. Used to give them out. And um, I have my own preferences on which ones I like and stuff like that. But I scooch you down to this area where it says early release of PDF codes. But then I noticed right here, this date, they released three new documents for just two days ago on these and look what it's got long code descriptor versus a medium code descriptor versus a short code descriptor what so then i looked at the short and of course it's just a code and a couple of words probably what we get in the book right it'll tell you what day it, it got released what day it goes in effect and what publication it's going to be in these are all going to be for your 2023 book so then I was curious, well, what does the long descriptor look like? And I looked at it. Is this the long descriptor? Of course, they give us a long descriptor. It tells us subcutaneous um, stuff like that. But they did add more info in on some of the toxoids and stuff like that. Um, these, and it'll say report codes, whatever, whatever with it and stuff like that. They do look at all those words. They all got mixed up, but whatever CPT code that is, that's a long descriptor code, and you know we ain't going to get that in the book. And then I go back, and I want to look and see what the medium descriptor code is. Why can't we just buy a book that has a full descriptor in it no matter what? I mean, I guess it'd be 5,000 pages long, but, um, well, we've already got one that's, you know, a 1,000 pages long. 
But it was now. Watch right now. What? Somebody's texting me about Travis. Sorry, so so he's over at a, somebody else's house right now. So let me read. And picture FYE he now has who? Who? I don't know if she's making a joke, but that's not a funny joke. Anyway, my little man, my little man. Sorry about that. So that's kind of interesting. These these will be coming out, some of them, not until the 2024 book. Uh, some of them will be coming out in 2023 CPT book. But it's weird that they have all these different ways they give out information I wish they'd just give out just a full dis description of everything. Anyway, I was going to go back to their shop, and I noticed that they had a few more things that looked interesting that I might buy right here at the store. And then they had, yeah, 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 I don't want ebooks. I like paper books. But I can get ebooks. I do buy from AAPC the paper books and the um Yep, 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 yep. I know this is not supposed to look like a paper book, but that's our 2023 that's coming out October 1st. But they made a companion book with it, not the CPT changes, but they made something else. Where did it go? Right here, this E and M com compendum book. Whatever the hell that means. But that looks interesting. What does that mean? And it's only about E and M's, so I'm sure it's another two hundred dollars, whatever they want for it. They don't give you prices, of course. But it doesn't come out till October of 2022. But that might have some more stuff. It says its benefits are help navigate the revisions that are going to be happening. Um, I don't know. But I thought that was neat. They have some extra crazy foolishness to sell. They had this um, right here, but you got to be careful about some of this principles of CPT coding. They don't tell you what year they made it. Yeah, they got it in this year's catalog. But what I find is that unless you go look like in Amazon or somebody that's required to publish when it was first published, then you don't find out that they didn't. They made this in 2020 and it's unhelpful and you're paying premium price. So be careful. This one's got the vocabulary terms and some other stuff. They also have something called CPT case studies, another $200 book, I'm sure. Um, I don't know when this was made, but it does. It like, why don't they, they obviously put down here, right here available then when they published it in the SBN number on some of the books, but some of the older books, I think they're just trying to resell this year. They don't put that publication date down here. This one says that, oh, that's just saying to add these to your already 2023 library. So I'm not sure when this was published. I think I've already looked this up. And it was a later date, and that's why I don't have it purchased right now. Um, coding modifiers, too. 
Again, no date about when it was published. And I think that one's an old version too. They just update the cover and it's silliness. I don't know why. Gotta be careful with some of these. Anyway, I'll of course get the CPT changes, um, the new CPT book. The only one I was worried, considering was this thing, but I don't know when it was published. And I think it says it's going to be available in October, so it might be a new publication. So if it is, I'll get it and let y'all know if it's going to be good. All the exams do change as of January 1st for AAPC. Um, and they'll be updated with the new codes, and these books will go into effect. But that's interesting about those long code, medium code descriptors, and short code descriptors. Like, why do they do that? Hey, Sandy. How are you? I did my first AAPC practice exam 80 and I got 30 out of 50. That's perfect. 30 out of 50 is a very above average if that's the very first time you ever took one of those. That's awesome. I think that's a great score. I don't even think I got 30 out of 50 the first time I took it because their language and I didn't know what to look for out of the questions. So that's awesome. I think that's great. Don't worry about it. Go back through them. The ones that you did get correct, go find out why you got it correct. What headers are they correct answer under? What in the CPT question was notable to be related to that CPT code? Make notes and then also go through on the ones that you got correct. Find out why the wrong answers are wrong. Go through those CPT codes. Look for the headers. Look for the different changes in the wording and the what little bit of a descriptor we do have and make notes about what's different and the ones you didn't get correct take it again and redo it that's awesome i think it's great scariest movie of all time was exorcist i don't think i've ever gotten through that one entirely i you know i've tried to watch it and some things are just too much, too scary for me. <laughs> just too scary. It's awful. I can't get through the Chucky series either because dolls are freaky as it is. I can't get through those. I can't watch them. Um, I liked the Freddy Krueger series until I watched the most updated version. And then I got really tore up about that series because of the new information that I didn't think about when I was watching the 80s ones that comes light in the 2001. And now I'm like, oh. and, um, you know, the Jason's ones are rough, but I can watch those and uh, Nightmare Before Elm Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Final Destinations are terrifying. I've gotten through one of them, but the I, I just, oh, my Lord. <laughs> it's one of those movies you see and you have PTSD from because you know that could happen any day and, and life will just be laughing at you because, yep, you're an idiot. You stepped there. Honestly, my favorite thing is to use the erasable pens in my book. That's awesome. That's fantastic. I hope they work good. Hey, Sanchez, how's it going? Poor Travi, he's killing me. It's killing me. Had to rearrange my whole um, kitchen cabinet, separate all the cans from the other goods, and, wa and wash them off, and uh, put all the box meals together, and um, look for expiration dates and all that stuff today. So yeah, or yesterday, yeah. And then um, he can't have control over the TV remote control, so that's what he loves, and. Um, he can't play any video games on the Oculus or anything like that. So, poor guy. Um, can you contact AAPC for discount codes? They gave me 60% off for the all six practice exams. Wow, Sandy, I didn't know that. That is awesome. Be sure and contact your local, um, your local 
chapter, even if it's super far away, and ask them for a grant to get free books, too. But I will post that, Sandy. I'll take a picture of that. That's great. Well, I'm going to call them for 60% off. <laughs> Mine will be due again in uh, January. And I buy every one of their practice codes exams for all their certifications. So it's a hefty bill. Okay. Yep, I like the big white out too. Amazon had some two. Oh, I'm looking for mine that were like they're not as good as big, but you get 25 of them for six dollars with free shipping. And for that price, you know, <laughs> it's okay. And it doesn't matter if one rips or tears, it, it you know, then you've got. 24 more of them but i am stocked up on my sharpie pens and highlighters are all in the building ready for this year's books whenever they get here a guy that helped me out did a special invoice for me and i paid for all six for 119 dollars. that is awesome sandy that saved you 45 bucks or something somewhere around there 50 bucks that's a good deal yep Free AAPC starts on September 6th. I bet it's the same thing that um, everybody's saying it is. It's going to be the CPMA course. Read the fine print, my loves, because... Um, where's my blackboard? There it is. When you do get their free courses, it's not like it was when it was during the uh, CPC exam. Um I bought, I'm not during CPC exam, during COVID time when they gave away a whole entire free course, they gave away 25 chapters of um, exams and course material for COC, CIP, and CPB. They were 25 chapters each with the books and the study guides, and they were, they were huge. What they're doing this year compared to last year is giving you a prior year's course. Like I can go click on this and, hey, Jay Bird, how's it going? Hi, can I have a uh, uh, Yahoo? Yes, you can have a Yahoo. I can click on my chapter one. And when I do, James, you need to get that turned off. Some of the course material was from 2021, um, and it wasn't, and it's only six chapters. It seems very, very short, and um, they only give you four months access, so you won't have the whole entire year. So, and people keep telling me they can't find these, but, oops, that was supposed to be Blackboard. Um, but this course material is pretty cool. Um don't forget to go to the answer key sheet, which a lot of people that get that pay for courses don't even know that's there, but they do have an answer sheet and it's right here under course. Sorry, I'm not showing the camera under course material and every course I've ever had from them has always had these answer sheets and they um, are for all those 10 question answer sheets. So they don't tell you the question, but they just give you the answer. Like for the quiz that's on chapter one, which is a five question quiz, the 1.1, here's all the answers and the rationale. Um, but people claim they can't find this, but every course I've ever had has had this in it. So I don't know. I don't know if they're just picking on the CPC course altogether and they don't give you an answer sheet, but um, it's been in the COC, CPB, and the CIP, CIC, and then also the CPMA. So you only have three months, and it seems like it's a, it does seem like it's a smaller course than you would purchase, I, I hope, I, anyway, I don't know. But um, that's that's the course right there for that one. And you only get three months to pass it, which three months to do seven chapters is not bad at all. But um, I know a lot of their 
courses are a lot bigger, you know, so, I don't know. Um, what else? What else we got? Too many words. Let's see. Starting on September 6th, they're giving away stuff and discount prizes. You know, I still haven't even gotten my prizes from Alex either. I have both the ebook and the paper books. I like that. I always buy them in May or June when they run a special to get the ebooks free. And then I condundum, what does that mean? Like everything about it in one book. I have no idea what it is. I've never seen it before. So is this the first time they've ever written something like that? What does it have in it? I don't know. I have something of theirs. And good God, it's too much info for me to go through um, for e and I try. It's this um, Coder's Dictionary and Reference Guide. This sucker is mega big. It's it's thick. It's thick. It's thick as thick as thieves. A thousand pages, and this is just E and M crap. So it's crazy, and it's got some modifier hips help in it too. But um, where is it at? But this this sucker is cool, but it. It's thick. It's just so thick. I don't know what it is. But it's put out by AAPC. It's not put out by AMA. So that's why I wanted to make sure I got it because there might be some more information in here that we need to know. And I have been using it for the E&M descriptors for the um, critical care services. I've been using it for that. And that's been helpful so that I can see some more information on the section on why we don't do pediatric. Um, we don't bill for pediatric intubation and stuff once they've been in, admitted to the hospital. But for adults, we do. So that was helpful for that one particular area I ran into that was really hard. What it mean? It detailed information about the subject. And it means a collection of concise but detailed information. I don't know. Has anybody seen that book yet and see what it has in it? Yes, I'm certain the 2023 books are going to... Well, I don't know about changing the exam. I have no idea. Until I get reports back from whoever the first people are to volunteer to be sacrificed... <laughs> and take the exam, you know, in January and February. I won't know if the new codes are in there yet or not. There is going to be like 1,600 new CPT codes, and E&M is going to be all rearranged and different. I'm assuming they're going to be feverishly writing those questions as soon as October hits. We already have a list of all the new codes and the names of them. I published them for you so you didn't have to buy them from AAPC on my website for free under the blog. And they already know what codes are and already changed. So they could be writing new questions right now that are going to start January 1st. But I don't know until somebody is a sacrificial lamb and <laughs> takes the practice try or or at least attempts to pass the CPC exam in 2023. We don't know. Um, so we'll see. That's why that one document is so handy dandy to have. It's awesome to have. Um, it's worth having because you got in real time 
what's happening during the exam. Somebody asked me a question on Etsy the other night about that document, and I had no idea what que what what the question meant. Maybe you guys can help me out what she's talking about. Because she was talking about that particular document. Her name is Cassie. And she said, hey, Jen, on page 16, thing, are things listed under revised codes? Have the codes for those things been revised? I'm a little confused there. And I'm like, I, I don't know. There's 54 pages there on, of that document. And what does she mean by revised codes? I'm just posting what people have posted and told me was on their exam for 2022. That's all that document is, what they said was on it. Now, some of the info could be outdated, of course, because that's the way APC wanted the questions to be done with, this particular codes. Nothing is done in real life, such scenarios. So I, I don't know. I don't know how to answer. I don't know how. I don't know. I just said I'm unable to help with that question. Try posting it in our study group so that we could find and get help for that question. Thanks, Jen. <laughs> so, Cassie, if you're here, I'm worried about your question. I'm not trying to be, I don't know, but I, I don't know what I'm supposed I don't know. I don't know. January, 1,600 new codes and some deleted. So, yep, I bet the exam will be changed. We will not be able to use the 2022 books for that exam if they do put those 1,600 codes in there because there's no way you can revise the 2022 book to hold all that. That would take you forever. I'm not even going to attempt. All right. What are the pros and cons of this book? I have no idea, Debbie, so I'm just going to buy it and oh she's replying back to Debbie but I'm just wondering you can write in the book and make notes if you're taking the exam you can't take it yeah you can't take some of those books with you you can't take ebooks with you either yeah I stink at practice test I just passed my CANPC yay um it depends. If you're not in the market for a job right now, or you already have a job and you're just trying to boost and make yourself have more money um, so you can move up the career ladder, I'd say CRC all, always. Um, if, let's go here. Let's go see. So I need to take this out and go get rid of that date. And no, I don't want that. I want that. So, like, if you're really wanting a job, job fast, I always go with what's available. Like, who's who's looking for somebody? You, Dan. Let's see if we, how many we get. We get 11, 102, 112 jobs there if we do CPC. We get 4,000 jobs. If we do CRC risk, we're going to get 466 codes. So I like to just go by the job market so that I can at least get my foot in the door. I can always continue and get more certificates once I got my foot in the door. Depends on what you're if you need a job right now, get the CPC. If you want a smaller risk pool, higher pay, uh, risk is a really good place to be in because everybody is hiring for risk right now. Everybody. And these are all remote jobs. That's what I'm looking up. I'm not looking up in-person jobs. So these are all remote. I keep my indeed on you guys for remote because I think it's important for that so it's fun fun to work from home be like me but you can't do risk adjusting and all that kind of stuff around your own area for sure 
Ooh, HCC, that is a risk adjuster too. CRC means the same thing as HCC too. So don't forget to look for those. That's better, better pay right there. Outpatient, inpatient coding. Eh. It took me three years to get my, my certification. I've worked in it for three years. Y'all need to hire me anyway. <laughs> Don't forget when you do apply, you need to take those words that they say right there in their description and put that inside your resume somewhere. You're going to have IP and OP charts, that direct wording in your resume. You will change your resume for every single place that you apply for. Move their data into your data. I'm going for my uh, PhD in auditing and um, that's where you get the doctor of auditing and you can get that here in the United States, you can become a medical auditor with a PhD in it, in case you didn't know. And you have to have no medical or clinical to go along with that. It can be strictly just getting your bachelor's, master's to a doctorate without going to med school, in case you didn't know. <clears throat> Y'all still have to start referring to me as Doc. <laughs> kidding. Kidding, kidding, kidding. Only in the white space is great job. You guys answering each other's questions. Where's my twinkle? Is she in here? I hope she is. Remember passing 80% or higher. So looks at it subjectively. Yes. You pass. That's great. Keep up. The voice actor for Lilo and Lilo as Stitch played the grunge. Oh no. The purge was terrifying. I never did finish all of that either. I got to the dinner table and that was that was all I could do. Oh. Or the ring, yeah. Remember the Macaulay Collin one with the two brothers? Adopted brother and then, and then the bio brother and you got to make a decision and save one of them on this cliff. Oh my God, I turned it off. I could not watch the end. I didn't want to know what she chose. It was just, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> Kimberly, good to see you. The Conjuring. Oh my gosh. Yep. She was. Oh my gosh. You're a horror movie buff. I guess so. You've even worked in a horror house. That's fine. I don't mind spirits. I welcome them coming around. They're always turning off my TV or opening up a dresser drawer. Or um, I see numbers repetitively like 444 or 666. You know, those are repetitive numbers, what time it is during the day and stuff. And I'm like, oh, dad's here again. He shut off our TV or whatever. So I don't mind spirits. They can come around all they want. But being spooked by um, with those horror movies, they're really psychologically give me so much um, anxiety about. Oh, I like happy adventure movies like Star Wars and, you know, let's go fight some Klingons or something, you know, whatever. I don't I don't I don't I don't want to fight something I can't <laughs> light a lightsaber and get rid of, you know. Yep, Sanchez, that's a wonderful idea about the discount. Yep, just contact him. I paid $100 for my AAPC. Also, just ask. That's awesome. My goodness. Thanks for sharing out the info. There's Twinkle. I even have that in the back of my physical copy. Do you have any recommendations to study the compliance and regulatory for CPC? Yes, in my study group on Discord, right here, you download the Discord. You go to, um, where did I post it, guys? Compliance and regulatory, our room right there that says compliance and regulatory. I posted every definition that you need. 
every single one it's going to be back you got to go back there you go all these the name and the definition name and definition write those in your book somewhere all of them that's what i recommend don't study don't memorize just write them in your book and then you got a whole page you can go to and go find the answer do different colors for different words that way when a new word starts you got a new definition and that's what I recommend. And then I've, of course, got some practice exam questions here for those um, areas, too. So come here. Come here to my Discord. It's all free. How do you obtain CEUs? So you go to your AAPC site, right? You're going to go up to the top where it says training. Then you're going to go over here to CEU search. Then you're going to go down here, and I always go to the low cost CEUs. And then you're going to go to your local chapter meetings or virtual meetings. They'll give you CEUs too, so contact them. But then this magazine right here has monthly CEUs. They're, um, you get one CEU for taking these tests. So go take these tests. And you can do back a whole year. So you can open up 2021 and do September's and October, November, and December. So those are all free for you. You can repeat and take these exams as many times as you want. Just after you take them three times and you still didn't pass, they'll make you um, um, wait an hour before you take it again. But that's okay. Um, that's where I get CEUs. You can join. Um, one more. Um, we have in our Discord, too. If you go to my Discord, we have a CEU room. And... It's right there. Go in there and we post links to events that are giving away um, CEUs too. So free webinars with CEUs. Um, other chapters, if your local chapter is giving away one free CEU with a webinar, please post it in here. Even if it's not time for you to collect your CEUs, you can always post it in here too. We got links and tons of info. Plus, I've done a bunch of TikToks with the answers down for these practice exam questions, too. Yeah, those long descriptors are crazy. But sometimes you want them. Um, at least just to see them once in a while. I like to get the CPT book insider view changes because they give us the long descriptors too of the CPT codes. They don't do every year, every year. Look at this one, one whole full column plus this. They only do um, a set few each year and it's random. And they also give you clinical examples to go along with it, which I love. But yeah, could you imagine reading all that during a CPC exam? I know why they do it short, but sometimes we don't know what the dang difference is because they don't give us. I could go through here and pick out one or two words that makes all the difference in all the world after I audit this from this CPT code and another CPT code if I'd have just had this descriptor when it's non-specific from whatever words they picked. Um, but yeah, I love these. I just wish I had every freaking year. You gotta go back to... You know where my, you know where my, uh, uh, my child is interrupting me. It's so important for him. You know my yeah, I threw it out in the garage somewhere. It's out in the garage. It's in a pile somewhere out there. Because you left it in a chair. <laughs> so I think they're cool, especially when you guys come up with those hard, hard questions. And somebody like Mean is asking me a very, very technical question on one of these CPT codes. And it's not clear on the short descriptor. It's nice to have these long descriptors but I wish there was a book 
that I could buy for like 2023 that had every single long description for every current CPT book code for everything for 2023. Whether they've done an update or change to it at all, I just want all of the long code descriptors so that if I need it for you guys, when y'all have technical questions, I can answer it. That's what I need instead of having to buy every year of these things. So far, I've got I got 20 years to buy, 20 because I've got the last three, so now I've got 20 more years to buy. So it's crazy. Do I have to be a member of AAPC to get this, to get the CEUs? I have no idea what this question is to inferring. My study group, no. My TikTok lives, no. Anything that I teach, no. To actually be able to take the magazines articles for a CEU? I believe so because it's linked. If I go to my AAPC and I go to my tracker, I think it's a tracker. Is that what they call it? Yeah. It tells me and links my magazine test scores to my CEUs and then it will automatically track how many I need. So I need 36 of 36. How many do I have right now? Um, I had to do 17 last year. This year I need 36. That's to be submitted. Where is... I know on my phone we've got this AAPC thing that comes up with how many you've done and how many you need. Um, See if I've even logged on on this phone. Nope, that's not it. I think it's in. No, it's not that phone either. Where is my I didn't even download a PC here. Good gracious. Nope, I didn't. I know there's somewhere around here that tells you how many. Maybe it's my AAPC. My profile go somewhere. There we go. 36 do. I don't know. How many did I submit? Oh, there it is down there at the bottom. So I've entered in 22.75 and I have 13.25 more to do. It just automatically tracks and I have to have them do by or turned in by 7 of 2023. 20, so that's just doing the free ones from the monthly magazines. And I think I did a couple of uh, telemedicines, round tables, um, the third quarter, fourth quarter um YouTube videos, and just the magazine. So these are all free. And I have, uh, I got less than, I got 12 months. So I've got less than 12 months to get 13 more done. And I will. I will. So I think for the, the grading to happen, you got to be logged on as a member. But I have no idea. I don't work for AAPC, so I don't know every answer. Red got an email today that her exam is next Saturday. Oh, you're going to rock. You're going to rock. I was thinking about doing a workshop that Sunday. I don't know, the 11th or the um, 18th. One of those days to do a workshop, and I was going to do it on eyes and ears. I'll all the medical coding on the eyes and ears, I haven't done, I don't think. Of course, EMM and cases, but I don't think I've done a workshop on eyes and ears. I just got to decide whether I want it the 11th or the 18th. 
I don't know why your exam makes me think about that, but it does. Maybe ask if the coder or the descriptor has been revised. I know. And how would I know if the code descriptor has been revised or not? I don't know. Because that particular document is just what people tell me is on their exam. So I'm not understanding the question because, like, you know, she says page 15. So if I go to page 15, let's see. This is page 15. All it is on page 15 is just my top 10 things that I think you should learn because they're, um, it's the, um, it's important for um, your guidelines. You know, you need to learn why that is not backing up. But there we go. It's just my top guidelines that I think you should know. So my version of page 15, depending on what page she um, printed it, it might print on different pages, but this is my 15. And it's just a list of the top 10 guidelines that I want to know. So I have no idea what she wants. And then other than that, um, Medicare, Part A, Part B, what does it pay? Um, and then my sepsis examples attached to each guideline. I have no idea. So without a picture of what you're asking, it's it's really hard. Just telling me a page number isn't helpful because then I, I don't know. Um like, send me a picture. What, what, what do you want me to explain? But that's what my 15 is. And it's not got anything about revised codes at all. It's just a list of things that I think you should work on knowing is your guidelines for hernia repairs, your guidelines for toxic effect, your guidelines for coding, underdosing, and overdosing. I know it's very vague. And I should list out some helpful tips or something about each one, but I was just writing out a short list because somebody asked me for it. The rest of it is just paste from somebody else. This does say revise code, but I don't know where that comes from. Maybe she's asking about that word or sentence. I don't know. But the rest of it is just this person had a CT of the abdomen and pelvis, oral contrast. That means you pick the code that says without contrast. You'll pick CPT code without contrast. She had a CK test repeated three times in one day. Do you know if you do times two, times three? Um, do you just code the code? three times in a row, those kinds of things. But maybe that's the word she wanted to know. Why is that road word there? And I don't know why it's there myself. It's just what somebody told me was on their exam. You guys type out this, and then I just copy-paste. So that's all the info that I have is revised code. Maybe they had a question about when do codes revise? When do they update? Which is up in the front of the book. Um, we've got that in the CPT book, the dates of when codes um, are updated and then when they go into effect. Maybe she's, I don't know, but this info is not mine, so I can't really comment on it. I can guesstimate about why they wrote the word revise code down, but it could be a question totally unrelated to dates. I have no idea why it's there. I don't know. But this is updated. What I was doing was the info that somebody gave me, uh, Annie, Annie gave me. I was going through her stuff and finding some practice exam questions on her stuff. So some of this stuff was from Annie right here. Where'd she say? She said she had named the three types of pre-transfusion testing. God, this sounds like she had exam C. It sounds horrible. ABO group and RHD negative type antibody screen. That's what she gave me. Then I went and went and found some information about typing and screening with the CPT codes and posted it underneath it. Um... One unit of service 
blood is coated with this one, if it's one unit, each unit, and then we use thawed blood, we code with that one. If we're doing blood typing, we do this one. If we're doing RH factor, we do this one. Cross matching is this one. I just have been going through here and finding info and practice exam questions with the answers to let um, to go along with her stuff. I almost got tricked by, out by an Infusaport problem. They presented it in a different problem. So I went and found one um, because she said something about cancer and Infusaport. So I found this question, which was the 64, 67 year old gentleman with Infusaport with the practice question. Um, a, B, C, and D, and then the answers right here. So that's what I've been doing before I release it, is going through here and finding stuff. She had a drug essay of drug for Depoxin. She said this code was on it, is what she used, and it can be found on that drug essay. Well, then I went and found a question to go along with it. On um, Somebody used that, 88309, whatever, and... Pope was did one here. The sweat chloride I'm still working for. I know there's a question out there somewhere about that. And this one's supposed to be and. So that's what I'm doing right now is just finishing up, adding what I can find on this. The pooling, she said something about that. Those ophthalmology scopes, she thinks she had the 992242. So then I went and found the most important mutually exclusive edit for that code. Under no circumstances can you bill 99242 with any of the other nine codes for the same day for the same patient. So that was pretty crazy. I know she said she had a problem with that code number in it. And that's the info that I found about that code number is that you absolutely under no circumstances code it with pretty much anything else around there. So I thought that was cool. And then I posted that info there, and I think I posted a practice question with it. But that's what I'm working on now. I found, she said, the modifiers QN and Q or S something was on hers. And I went and found those modifiers and some examples. She had a total... Body surface area of 24% burned with 10% was third degree. And I couldn't find that specific question. Closest I could find was one about 30 degree burns, I believe. And they had some neat info about 9 times 3 equals 27. That's how they got a 27% burn body ratio. So... I threw that in there, and this was the practice question. But this kind of info is super helpful. But I don't write what the info is, and a lot of times I don't have time to update or go find practice exam questions to go along with it. But I was trying to – it looked like Annie had a really rough one, so I was, like, trying to find some practice exam questions with it that per Conky fiber, whatever the heck that word is, and the bundle of his used to be on the exam about a year and a half ago. I think it came back because somebody mentioned it. So I put an, a fill in the blank question that I found with it um, right there with the rationale. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, so this document will be updated and emailed out pretty soon. Probably Sunday. I don't think I'll get it all finished tonight, but Sunday I'll be back and be able to do that because I'm going to go, I think, out gallivanting tomorrow. But that document is on my Etsy shop and in on my website at Medical Coding by Jen if you want it. And you just purchase it once, and every time I update it, I will email you out a good version of it, an updated version. Just please make sure... Your iPhones don't put in junk email addresses or I have to individually send you out an email every time I update it. And that is time consuming with, you know, 13,000 of you. So I have it on an automated system, sort of. <laughs> 
I just go through every order and every time I sell one, I add it to an email list and send it to you guys. So that's a whole lot easier. Um, thank you for the roses. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We have a goal of a lollipop. If anybody has a lollipop, it's only one. So I know TikTok's fussing at me for the lollipop thing. I don't know why. I think it's five of the roses or something. Um, AAPC site regularly attends virtual meetings for free. Yep. Yep. Perfect, Annie. Yep. Congratulations on passing your test. That's awesome. Thank you, Peace, for the roses. Those go to free notes for people that want copies of my notes and need help. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. So that'll be like three lives in a row where I met the goal. And I don't know if I'll get anything for that or if TikTok will keep pushing out my material more. But I hope that's helpful to all of us all around. I did not go live last night. I felt so bad. But y'all know what came out last night? The Lord of the Rings. Yes, yes, yes. We had two episodes, an hour long. And we had a whole popcorn and night in front of the tv watching the new lord of the rings episodes loved it on amazon loved it loved it loved it they spent a billion dollars making the series uh they had to pay like 260 million dollars just to the son of tolkien who wrote the series just to be able to do these series so i was like man it's really good thank you for the roses i have a job I just want to have it for leverage. Hey, Lala, that's awesome. Thank you, Twinkle. How can I learn and get certified? I love. Um, you can join our Discord group, which um, if you go to medicalcodingbygen.com, it's my website. It's all for free. You can go here, go to my social media links, and right here you can join our Facebook group, our TikToks, of course. Don't forget to follow, guys. And the YouTube videos, everything that I teach here for free, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, is posted up on YouTube so y'all can watch them again in your free time. You can drive your family nuts with my voice. And then also, my free study group link is right there. You just click Join Now. Discord is a free app. It won't track you like Facebook groups and other things will. It's a ner It's for nerds. Gamers use it. But I use it to store all my data so I don't have to repeat it over and over again. Plus, it's got all the storage capabilities without me having to pay for it, where I can post a ton of pictures and stuff there for you guys. When you do join our Discord group, you have main chat room which is probably going on right oh where's my main chat room it's right here you click on my face this is our main chat room which i feel bad i did not read yesterday and then we've got all these practice rooms if you want to practice questions if you want to what to expect on exam day and resources that room right there e m resources cpt resources anatomy compliance other certifications medicine anatomy you can see who all we've helped you get job resources and even practice code is very helpful in here that wonderful vision oh one she has passed and finished her practice code so she's available as a resource for you guys um, you can do study buses and even case examples but you can post your questions here in our main chat room and um, learn all about it. The AAPC website is also a very good resources. They've got drop down menus for days to tell you all about the coding, what's to expect, how to do it. They've got tons of resources, blogs and forums and things that you can join in. Absolutely. Tons of resources. Where do you find information on a doctorate? Colleges, college programs, absolutely. Website for 
self study. Thank you. Thank you guys. Y'all are helping out answering all those questions. Now I want to get my PhD and I haven't even gotten my CPC. I know, right? Just get your CPC, get your CRC, start working and do just some online classes, some like fast track stuff. Get your associates, then do a fast track to get your um, bachelor's and do a fast track to get your master's. Um, there's a lot of online courses, classes, or people that do one class per semester. You'll do one class for 12 weeks, which I can handle one class, one course, one questions, one discussions, one final exam. And then in 12 weeks, I take my final exam and, ooh, I get my CEUs for that course. Then I move on to my next one. And then I move on to my next one. Do one every 12 weeks. Make your job. Pay for all these. And um, just do one class every 12 weeks. Some of them have eight weeks classes, which are fine as long as it's just one class. I only want one thing to study. I don't want to do multiple. And then get your master's and then get your Ph.D., um, I'm trying to think, G, GSW, G, GDW, G, um, can't think of the initials right now. We've got the masters, but um, why can I not think of it right now? They are great. They're, they're Christian-based, so it's not that I went there because of that. I went there because I like their program where it's fast-paced and it's one class per thing it's not you could take three ceus and you do monday wednesday friday or tuesday thursday this is just all week by friday you got to turn in this or by sunday you got to turn in this you get all week to do whatever you're supposed to do in that class all the new assignments come out on monday morning and then you do all those assignments whatever they happen to be during the week and then um your classroom discussions whenever you have time and then you do, um, and you get your degrees. And a lot of people have already done these. And you can get find groups and support that have already taken, you know, your English or your social science or whatever. They've already taken it. So with that teacher and with that school, and you can get a lot of help online, kind of like Quizlet that'll have all the answers for it. Um, for all the quizzes, and then you just got to make up your own discussion questions to post. So you can have it really easy um, for for easy, easy, easy. I'll have to go back, and, and I'll let y'all know what college it was real quick. I don't know. Um, for the master's. And then, is that, no, that's not it. I'm trying to think. God, I know I always get the abbreviations backwards because the dyslexia runs in deep. Anyway, um, and then, yeah, you can just get your Ph.D. in auditing. I didn't know there was such a thing until one of I always get audited by a um, federal bro program group every year for my medical group. And um, I am in charge of the audit and I have to prepare all my medical groups data for that audit. Well, my auditor that we have to pay for an outside auditor to come into our group and, and audit us. Well, that company switched our auditor because one of them went away and then the other one came in and then he went away and then they hired another one and she had a PhD in auditing. Her first email came through to me and I was like, who the heck is this? She has a PhD in medical auditing. There is no such thing. Is there such a thing? Met her. She came in and audited and she comes in walking like the Queen of England, literally hat, gloves, and everything. Fantastic woman. She's from Germany and Russia and very thick accent, wears the hat, the gloves, everything. She looks like the Queen of England. Love her to death. But I've been fascinated with her degree ever since and wanted it one because talk about shaking in your boots when you get an email from somebody who's coming into your house to audit you and they have a PhD. Oh, yeah, I want that power, too. <laughs> and so I've been working at it for 10 years. I'm like, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm going to if I got to do one class a semester, I don't care. I'll do it one class a semester, but I'm going to get me a Ph.D. That's awesome. So, yeah, I like that. Very, very close. Oh, I'm sorry, your TikTok crashed. 
What did you say about the jobs and updating your resume to match the description? So when you're in Indeed and you want to get through one of these um, bots that scrub resumes because lots of people are applying for these jobs, right here, essential duties, you're going to copy and you're going to say your essential duties were something like this into your document. Now you're going to change it up a bit and you're going to find yourself a, th a, a thesaurus to change some words around. But you could change uh, specific diseases to something else, um, whatever. Even if you didn't work in a position, you studied. So... During your studies, you reviewed medical records. You did. You've done plenty of casework and stuff like that, um, that kind of stuff. I mean, you can change this up to meet any of your needs for sure. All they want, somebody that has a CPC, they don't care, or CCS, a CRC, anything along those lines, only through those two companies, one or the other. Um Coding experience and stuff like that is one thing, but the main thing that you need is to have these essential duties moved over to your resume and prove that you've done it somehow or another. I don't care if you worked at McDonald's, you've done something. You've met the quality and production standards of your management. You can write that in there. I don't care where you've worked. You've got to copy this. Now, if you go to another company, they're going to have a different list of job qualifications or expectations and um, you're going to copy and paste that into there because they're bots that scan these things aren't going to give you an interview if you don't have something from their rationale that they want if they call I've seen them call CPT something totally different look how they're doing HCC slash ICD-10 if you've done ICD-10 in the hierarchy, that's something totally different, and they shouldn't have a slash in there. But the way they spell it and the way they put it together, you should have it exactly spelt just like that when you apply here to the GEBBS. That's going to be a Blue Cross Blue Shield probably program through Optum because they put in various vague names. Um, but if they spell HIPAA even the wrong way in their job description – put it the way they spell it, um, all that kind of stuff. If they don't put in the dots in between OB like they're supposed to, O dot, B dot, you don't either, that kind of stuff. There's no apostrophe for women's. Ugh. Yeah, that's what I mean when you update your resume for everywhere you apply. If you don't put something from their job description in your resume, somehow you're not going to get picked for an interview, and you need to get into the interview. There's this great old guy on the inner, on the YouTube page. I'll have to find him. But a lot of these interviews now are done virtually or through Zoom. And if you are nervous about questions and how do I answer, you know, what would your job say about you that's wrong with you? <laughs> what would you say is something that you accomplished that was Difficult, I don't know, all those vague psychological questions that are stupid. Um, there's this guy on YouTube, he's an older guy, but he teach, he taught me how to answer those difficult problems and practice ahead of time over and over again until you're very comfortable so that you can lay back, relax during your Zoom meeting, and no matter what they hit you with, he's already prepared you with those questions so that you interview well. And I'll I'll get you that info and get that posted. But um, yeah, I like that guy. He was cool. A lot of people are very vague or too highfalutin, use fancy words that make no sense. He had direct rationale that was great. So I like people that um, are direct, even though I'm nowhere near direct. Can this be used for a CCA recertification? I doubt it. We're on, you need to go to your AHIMA website and do your CEUs through them. How long do these lives been up? I've been doing them since April of 2021. I don't think I started posting them since then. I didn't. 
but I know I've done the last 12 months, and they stay up. They can stay up forever as far as I care. I'm not going to delete them. Some, you know, you can see if you look at my old lives from a year ago, how much better I am now and have more techniques than I did a year ago, which is handy dandy to know. Um, you know, we all improve with time and age. So that's part of it and part of what's helpful. You can see the progression, but I leave them all up. I'm not going to take them down. Discord is awesome. Well worth the time to look for help. Yep, there's always somebody in there 24-7 to help you guys. Thank you for the hearts. 6,002 shares. Um, what's a good starting salary range for CPC? They've done all that on the AAPC website. By state, you can look it up. 20 years of billing. Billing, you really shouldn't be starting out as a CPC. If you've got 20 years, you should be running your own billing department and making 120 grand a year by now. Um, I would find a small practice with eight coders or so, eight to ten coders that you would be in charge of, and I'd run them all. <laughs> if I had 20 years of billing, oh, my God, I'd be running the billing department. Oh, I got stuff spilt, but having your CPC included is great. And I'd make them pay for it. I'd make them pay for each year I was experienced, for sure. I I don't have any inclination to do billing. So um, you hold all the money. You are you are golden golden child right there. I don't know. What does a um. But AAPC has a tool on their website that tells you the paying salary for everybody. So, huh, Glassdoor does too. So upwards of 162000 if you are um, the manager of the department, which I would think was fair. If I got to manage 10 people under me and train them with all my knowledge of 20 years worth of billing information, then yeah, 162 seems reasonable. Now, if you just want to be a CPC, you know, ranges start from 25 on up, but it's all based off where you live. In Mississippi, you don't get paid as much as you do in San Francisco. So AAPC has a tool for that kind of stuff. So does Glassdoor. Uh, my kids are not awesome. They are awesome getting in trouble. <laughs> Hey, Balloon. Good to see you. I'm 60 messages behind. I'm going to have to skip ahead. I hope you guys have answered. Other people have helped answered your questions. I'm sorry. Where can you find free CEUs? Vanessa, it's at the AAPC website. You're going to go to um, training and exercises. Then you're going to go look for the bottom of the page where it says search for CEUs. You're going to click on the box that says low cost, and then you're going to scroll down to the second option where it has the magazine quizzes you can get. If you're an AAPC member, you can go back for the last 12 months and get 12 CEUs there just by answering those practice exam questions. Hopefully that's helpful. Hey, Mean, how's it going? You're welcome about the job help. She is from... Germany. 
Russian descent. She speaks Russian. Her name is Glenda, like the Good Witch. She is awesome. Yeah, um, CPT is pretty nationally known. I mean, the World Health Organizations, that's how we track how many COVID cases are, are through CPT codes and ICD-10 codes. Every world country has their own universal health care system except for the United States. So they've been using and they create all these CPT codes and ICD-10 codes before we even see them. And in fact, the World Health Organization and all other countries like Canada and um, Cuba, they're all in ICD-11 because ICD-10 is 10 years old and very antiquated. We have an updated version of the ICD-10, which the codes are no longer three to four digits long. They are um, 15 to 21 digits long. There's a lot outdated about the way we capture actually here in the United States compared to what Russia does and other countries. So uh, Germany, um, Canada, all that stuff. And they do all this stuff. They test it out, see what works, what doesn't work. And we eventually adopt it because we have to share our health information with in world treaties that we do. Um, that's why the World Health Organization, and that's how we could keep up with um testing how many tests we've done worldwide for things like COVID or pap smears or whatever, colonoscopies, and what um, disease rates are based off of uh, our world population. So I don't know. I think they do, but I could be wrong. But she's awesome. She works here for Washington, D.C. too. She's in the know with the um, CMS. Uh, she works in Washington, D.C. My auditor does as a part-time um, help write laws up in Washington, D.C. So she also works part-time as a health plan and medical group auditor. So really cool. I got to work with her for five years, and um, I just love seeing her come, and we always had great conversations. And I after my first time working with her, I was never um, intimidated by her again. Um, one thing that I learned in medical auditing is that you find what that person is passionate about who's auditing you, and you seem enthused about it also and get them to talk about it. Time runs by. The less time they can audit you, the less time, the more like the less likely they'll find something wrong. Too. So she was always very interested and kept up on the Washington, D.C. stuff and was always talking about it. So I was always interested in it and wanted to know about it, too. We'd spend half our day catching up, visiting, and then by the end of the day, she would say, okay, you can send me this data, this data, this data in the next week or two. And then I didn't have to show her in live time and produce reports right at that second for her to look at, she'd always let me send it to her after I made up the report. So that was always lovely and handy dandy to know. So if any of you guys are getting into auditing, you got to know the creative way of tactically doing the BS. Not that there was anything that they could find for me. I am really thorough and very difficult of, of a person for auditing, or I would not have won the Bassinger Award out of California twice when I beat out places like Kaiser Permanente that have teams of auditors for their groups. And I'm a good auditor, but I don't want to give them the opportunity to find anything. Also, I am protecting my company, which also helps out with a little bit of that. Just knowing how to fluff and talk and visit with folks is always handy dandy. Just saying. But that's cool about Russia. I hope they do use CPT. I mean, how else would we be getting their data from them about their... But we always figured that their data was skewed, some countries. So, you know, we only have to re accept the data that they send us. 
they, I guarantee you, the data that they had to send us from Russia or um, Germany had to have come into a format with CPT codes and ICD-10 codes once it got to the World Health Organization. So at some point, somebody's got to learn it. I heard that in Russia, they have regional doctors, and I mean like neighborhood doctors. So like if you live at 99201, a zip code, well, you are assigned a family physician. And if you have a stomach outbreak in your house, doc comes to your house, sees you there, recommends meds and all that stuff, may send you to the hospital, may not send you for further testing, depends, but they don't have like clinics that you have to make appointments to and come to the doctor is responsible for his neighborhood or her neighborhood. And they do that kind of practice care for their populations. That way, if one population is sicker than another population, well, it's doc's fault. They better find out why, you know, that kind of thing. Or there's a health or a plumbing issue or whatever standard is going on, we got to fix it in that neighborhood. And I think China does something along similar lines, but they do have a lot more clinics. So I don't know. Everybody does it a lot different. Sandy had exam A again. Awesome. I don't know. Thank you all so much for all the root review. The roses. Peace has done so many. Wow. Don't forget about the Dopplers in the U.S. and in, in the ultrasounds. My goodness, is that on one of the exams? I can't remember, Annie, if I have finished looking up that, all those different topics you wrote out for me. I just took a picture of that, and we'll make sure I have it added. Jess, how you get on the email list is you go purchase that document, which is on Etsy or on my website under the shop. It's like 25 bucks or something. Um, the, yep. All right, just looking through the questions. Yeah, I'm sure in Russia there's no AAPC. Yeah, I know about that. Yeah. There's A, B, C. It's in one bundle. Then there's D, E, and F in another bundle. Those are important. Let's get to some CPC exam practice questions. So I've got our 994. So make sure you know what section you're in if somebody was to say, where are you going? Some of the nine nines or codes that start in nine are in medicine section, which is way in the back of the book. Some of them are in the front of the book, which is in the E&M section. Getting good at recognizing what's an E&M and what's a medicine section code will save you a lot of time during the exam. Nine, nine, four, nine. So I'm just looking at these numerically. I have three of them that start off with 9949, and then I got this one outlier that's a 993. So I might not worry about that one yet. I'm going to go look at these 9949s because AAPC has a habit of picking two similar situations where the codes are very similar numerically, and they pick them because there's a difference and what they've got right here is numerically the 97 and the 98 are super close they just want to know can I code these two together or not do I have to code them separately also a lot of these codes are out of sequence you can't find them because numerically they're supposed to be able to run and find these codes by just looking up the numbers. And a lot of them are all scattered to the wind. So you gotta get good at getting to the code super fast. All right, so if we get to our 99497, we're on page 73 of the 2022 CPT book. 
And we see that our 97 is a mama code where our 98 is an add-on code. So we definitely cannot code the 98 by itself because it has that plus symbol in front of it. That means those codes can only be used in addition to another code that happens first. So that's important to know right off the bat. We can eliminate that answer without even looking at the question. And we can look at our 97 and we could see that that time is for 30 minutes. If we have an additional 30 minutes, we can add the 98. So we would have to find something that says one hour, somewhere around there, um, before we could do both of those codes together. So let's just check our question, and we don't need to know who they are. None of their history. I'm just looking for how long did they stay in that office and make sure that they are doing advanced care planning, which is my header. If they're not doing advanced care planning and they're doing something totally else like transitional care or something else that I know I'm under the right header and I got to go look up those two outlier codes. So we see that they spent almost an hour and it is an advanced directive which is advanced care planning. They want to know if we know if we can add this together when this is for 30 minutes and this is for an additional 30 minutes which we didn't quite make. We met we got 20 minutes of it, but does that mean we still get to bill for the whole extra 30 minutes? Yes, Kinza, yes, there certainly is. Thank you for the shares, Jess. Red, awesome. Thank you for the heart roses. Appreciate it. Y'all are going to be helping out other students. Hey, Fidea. Fidea. Going to see you soon for some more tutoring, I think. I think, I think, I think. I hope. Thanks for the share. Anybody guess? Everybody saying B? So A is incorrect. We've got some rationale there. We do have B as our correct code. We have C is incorrect. We have some rationale there. And this is for D. This is incorrect. When I have rationale for every single answer like this, the questions come from the AHIMA people. And this is a CCS practice question, which I don't think is bad. I think it's a great question. And it's very much like and exactly like what would be on the CPC exam. And I think it's just another resource to have. Their questions are written exact same way. Their exams are multiple choice until their case is down at the end also, where it's a matching game. So I think it's just fine. I think it's a great question. So now we know that we can put 50 minutes with this one, which means this one only needed to be 20 minutes. So the notes that you could write, which I don't have any in this particular page about this, is we could write down 50 minutes equals... We could do nine, nine, four, nine, seven, comma, nine. Oh, I can't see way up there. Nine, nine, four, nine, eight. I'm writing up in a book stand, so it's very uncomfortable. 50 minutes equals that, and we did an advanced directive is what they called it, which is a little different. It does have it right there, but advanced directive. Advanced direct. And then every time you see a practice question with a time and an answer, just make another bullet point. If you find one that's 45 minutes and the answer ended up being both of those, then write it down here. 45 minutes also equals these two. If it was 
72 minutes and it doesn't, and that only qualifies for the 97 by itself, then write that. But I like to use the practice exam questions when I have an answer coming from a reputable place, not like Quizlet or something, but if it actually comes from a HEMA in a written book or something or on one of their practice exams or AAPC's practice exam questions, and it's actually written out as the answer, then absolutely write those times down. Yes, we're doing tutoring soon. All right. Let's do this one. We've got... Oop. Again, these codes, got to know where your 992s are at. Are we in e and or are we in medicine? Which one would we be in? If you don't know that, you got some more practicing to do before you take that exam, for sure. 992. Yep, we're in e and &M. Absolutely. Good job, Mean. So 992. It looks like we've got ER... ER, ER, but that looks really re weird. Would we do reduced services on ER charges? Why wouldn't we just bill a 84 instead of a 85 if we did something smaller? That just looks like it's a coding irregularity to me. And then we've got our D is critical care. If you see 52 modifier in E and M, or if you see it in Antigmatary, I might get rid of that answer. I ain't never seen one be the answer, but these are new questions. So we've got two ERs and one critical care. If it's the answer is critical care, what's the one thing we need? And if you don't know this answer, you got more studying to do, but what is the one thing we need if it is critical care? 99291, that's my favorite one. Time means got it right. All we need is time from the question. If it's an ER visit, we are going to need three components. If it is either one of these ERs, which is history, and we're going to need exam, and we're going to need MDM, and all three of those have to match meaning we're coding an 84 for the history, an 84 for the exam, an 84 for the MDM. If we don't have them all matching, then we got a problem. So let's check out our question. First, we're going to check out our patient status. Is the patient's status in the ER or in critical care? That does not mean physical location. Physical location don't mean nothing. You could be down the ER for six days, but that's you've been admitted to the hospital in patient care. They just don't have a bed for you upstairs somewhere. So physical location means nothing. So every time they say ER, 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 ignore it. We need to know what the doctor considers the patient's status at. So we're going to go right here. and We're going to ignore. Ambulance is important because that makes me want to go to critical care. Because if they're brought in by ambulance... Something massive's going on. Don't know. We'll see. Always pay attention to the last sentence. What do they want me to code? What e &M are we going to bill for physician services? That's only the MD's billing, right? Physician services means e &M. We won't be billing for the critical care hospital services, right? So if we're billing for physician services, we need to take into account the doc's history, the examination, and the MDM. Yep. So if we have a history that's comprehensive, that's an 85 code. If we have an exam that was also comprehensive, yep, that's 85 and then if our MDM decision making was high, that's also an 85. All three match, so we know we can bill our 85. Yep, and there's no time in the question, which helps you get rid of critical care. Yep.
Oh, Lordy. Don't let all the days fool you. Whatever's going on is going on. Um, let's go to our 99291 since it is there in three of the answers. That 92, isn't that an add on code? 992. And again, you got to know if you're in EM or medicine. We're definitely in EM. <clears throat> the 99252. 92 92 god my eyes are terrible tonight that's an add-on code it will never be coded as a first code in any scenario you have to have its mama code or parent code whatever you want to call it so we can get rid of a as a possible answer that ain't going to happen now this is from a hema so you guys that are cpc are going to be looking at this going what the hell <laughs> Because AHEMA doesn't times anything, but AAPC does. So this is crazy, by the way, and I know it is. So we're going to pretend this says 992 times 2, right? And then times 2 here. AHEMA people, for some reason, write it out twice. They don't times it, even though the dang CPT book says what? says you times it. You don't write it out twice. I don't know what a HEMA people are doing, but I've not taken that certification nor any of their courses, but I like some of their questions. I grabbed this one. I just forgot to change it. <laughs> so it's weird. I don't know what's going on here. But I know enough to know that A is going out of the batch. Now we've got critical care, we've got CPR, our 50 code is a CPR, and that's a medicine code, which is in the back of the book. And then we've got this 4000 code, which is what? Not cardiology, what the heck is that? Resp no, it's not respiratory. Is that urinology? Ur urology? Urology? Digestive, maybe? Uh, maybe. Or maybe cardiology. Yeah, it's cardiology. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, we wouldn't be doing that if we were billing critical care. We don't bill a lot of stuff if it is critical care, especially from the 8,000 codes. I don't think we bill for the 4,000 codes either. We have a whole list of stuff we can't do. So I would get rid of C2. That looks like a coding irregularity. Now all I need to know is my time. Because I need to know if it's, if it's, if it's, if it's, if it's one hour and 44 minutes or up to 104 minutes. Or if it's more than 104 minutes or more than an hour and 44. That's all I need to know. Because if it is, then I would do the times two. If it isn't, then I'll do this one. That is just the time that is smaller than 104 minutes. So time is all I need to know from here. That's it. I don't need to know who they are. None of that other mess. Let's just find our time. We have 125 minutes. So I'm going to go look at my little handy dandy chart. I have a line drawn out because I was working with somebody that needed those drawn out. But 124 minutes does fall in the range where it the nine the 292 is times 2. I don't know why the AHEMA people write it out the code twice like that when it's supposed to have a times 2. But anyway, whatever. B is our answer for this one. It's digestive. Yeah, we ain't going to... Do nothing like that. Yep. And there's our answers and our rationale for why it's wrong. There's the thing about the add-on code, and it must be used with that code. It's never coded first, so that's handy-dandy to know. All right, let's go to some diagnosis codes with some office visits. So you got to know, are these E&M or medicine codes? 
first off is the first thing. Then you got to know, are they meaning new patient or are they meaning established patient? Because that right there will get you down to a 50-50 shot. I'm assuming, I don't know. Let's see. Let's just check the first sentence and see. New patient. We're going to have a new patient here. They're self-referred. So we're going to be able to get rid of A. We're going to be able to get through a D. And if you didn't know your differences between these codes being E and M, and then the difference between the 214 and the 204, then you're going to need some studying to do. Go find out why these are new and then why we can associate these with established. Then all we got to figure out is if we are a four, an F, why don't why I say four every time I see the letter F, weird dyslexia. So if we're an F9 or an F1, and that's it. We check out our diagnosis down here. Let's see what they diagnose the patient with. We got ADHD probably, right? If they're beginning that, where did it say their diagnosis was? Future job. Hyperactivity disorder. There you go. ADHD. Which one is the diagnosis code for that? You got to be careful because sometimes they're not hyperactive. They take that out and they just have a detention dis deficit disorder without the hyperactivity. So be careful when you're reading and make sure you actually see what you think you're seeing because they both start out the same, but the middle's different. So which ones are ADHD diagnosis? Anybody know? See what our diagnosis code book says. F90. Oh, thank you for the panda. That is awesome. I ain't never seen one of those before. That is cool. Who did that? Thanks, Holland. That's awesome. That was pretty. You'll end up giving somebody some free notes. So, F90. A, B, C, D, E, F, then our G and H. And 90 ought to be in the back, back pages. F90.0, predominantly inattentive type is our O, but our one is predominantly hyperactive type, and our point nine is unspecified. Did they say predominantly what type? Or just give them a diagnosis of nonspecific. They gave them just a, a nonspecific code. If anybody goes into risk adjustment, they would get their doctor to hopefully get them to code the F90.1 and they would just need to add that one particular line, predominantly hyperactive. If they just added that two words, then they could code the point one instead of an unspecified type which can get you into a lot of trouble and get you less money. So you want to stay away from those codes. They're all pink, so they're all MIPS codes, which is fine. But um, you just really want to be specific when you um, go into risk adjustment. I think that's a lot of us. Oh, my goodness. I know it's me for sure. This one's cool. So either we're going to start out with G's or an F or a Z. I'm thinking the G's because at least it's there twice. 
Now they do have the G and the F flipped, so we're going to have a guideline attached to something here. It's going to say, do we like code something first? Like if we're going to code this code, we got to code something first. Or if they're here for a wellness exam, we got to go for the Z code first or for chemotherapy or something. So there's some guidelines attached to all these coding. Hey, Michelle, how's it going? You're an RMH coder. That's awesome. Gastro tube. Yep, 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 yep. Unspecified. Love the panda. That is so cute. Okay. A or B. I agree. I kind of like A and B, but let's Let's just check and see what have we got this patient in for today. So it doesn't look like I see any cancer codes or cancer worries or a wellness exam. So I know the Z code is going to go away, right? Because we can't code that first unless it's a specific reason for that. That's probably a history of. And plus it's in three of the answers where it's the last code so that makes me want to get rid of z anyway so if we do look up our z 30 or g 30 not z but g 30 because that's the very first code we go we have numerically instead of the the 32 so i would go to the 31st because then I could turn to the 32 if I'm in the wrong spot. But my G30 I think they ask about this during the CPC exam. If I'm not mistaken, you ladies that have taken it before, don't they ask about Alzheimer's? Especially because it's always got all those red alerts that say use an additional code. And you can see that that code F0281 is written right underneath it for the dementia with behavioral disturbances. Okay, we know we need to add the additional code. Well, which one is first? They really don't explain it there. They tell us to use these two codes together, but how do you know which one's first? Oh, it's talent TikTok. <laughs> yes, I thanked Ray for her lollipop. Now it's asking me to reset this for some reason. Gosh, I guess I've been on here too long. There we go. Leave me alone now. All right. Should have been doing the lollipops? I don't know. Or the ice cream cones? I don't know what it was just flashing me. Um... So you just need to know that particular guideline. Anybody know it? G goes first. P says that G goes first. Anybody want to agree? We can get rid of that one because I like our all timers. <sighs> Thanks for the ice cream cone. And the dementia. It is mentioned first within the CPC exam questions and many times I do find that if we code, um, we code how it's listed in the question, not always, but a lot of times is if this is worded first, then we word this one the second, then they're coded in that numerical order too. Let's check out our questions. Yep, A is our answer. And we do have the rationale there. Code additional is down there. Needs an additional diagnose to indicate the behavioral disturbance. Yep. Super handy dandy. Is this the case that I have? I have a case somewhere. I don't know where. But I had a longer one somewhere. All right. Are we doing E and M or are we doing medicine, right? What is this 989 stuff? What is that? 989. Where is that code? Is that back in medicine or is that in E and M? I 
970. Yep. We are back here with those telemedicine. We have telemedicine in the back of the book, which um, for remote seeing patients, that kind of stuff. So if we were going to use these codes, 70, 71, and 72, it would be somebody else other than an MD. So it'd be like a social worker or somebody like that that we would be using the medicine codes for. If it's an actual MD, other qualified healthcare professionals, because everybody back here is qualified non-physician healthcare professionals, um, that's going to help us decide um, what our answer is. So we just need to find out who is doing this visit. Who is doing this visit? Who? Who is doing? Third sentence down says physician. So if we're doing a physician, what's the answer? We don't even need the time, I don't think, then. If it was a physician. Yep, that's the entire question. It's a travel doctor in a rural situation. Yep, D is your answer. Just knowing that anything in the back, if they're doing any telemedicine or something like that, an office visit, it's going to be.